This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a crime, horror, and sci-fi film called The Cell. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In a desert, Catherine Dean rides a horse which turns into a statue after she dismounts. Catherine then traverses the desert alone until she finds a boy named Edward Baines, shining a light reflected from a locket. Catherine reminds him that he promised her to go sailing today, but the boy hesitates. A wrecked ship appears behind Catherine, but she complains that it's too old. Edward then returns to a small boat on the other side, which satisfies Catherine. However, Edward tells her that Mokilok said that the boat is broken. Catherine reminds him that Mokilok isn't real, but the boy stresses that he's the boogeyman. When she picks up the boat, she hears screeching behind her. With a sigh, she reprimands Edward, who's turned into a monster. Disappointed, Catherine presses a microchip from her hand, allowing her to wake up at the Campbell Center. From the observation room, doctors Henry West and Miriam Kent check on her brain activity. Miriam then checks on Catherine and the comatose Edward, who's connected to the device that allowed Catherine to enter his mind. Later, Mrs. Baines reveals that her husband wants to transfer Edward to a hospital, thus stopping their procedure. Henry argues that they've been working on the project for years, but Catherine understands that they doubt her skills as a child psychologist. Mr. Baines, who funds their research, points out that they haven't had progress in months, and there's no proof that her interactions with their son aren't mere hallucinations. Meanwhile, Carl Rudolf Starker heads into an abandoned structure, where he approaches a glass cell with a drowned woman inside. At the center, the team is given another six months to treat Edward, so Catherine urges Marianne to try reversing the feed and allow Edward into her mind instead. She points out that when she did social work, taking the children out of their environment allowed them to see that things could be different. However, Miriam thinks that Edward would be shocked upon being thrust into another world when he's unaware of what's happening. In addition, they can't tell how it'd affect Catherine's mind. That night, Stargur washes his latest victim's body. While his dog, Valentine, barks on the side, he lifts himself using chains hooked to rings on his skin. As he hovers over the corpse, he watches the recording of the woman begging for help while the cell fills up with water. Her screams excite him and he pleasures himself over her dead body. The following day, officials discover the body thrown over the bridge, marking her as the seventh victim of the same killer. Detective Cole shows the body to FBI agents Ramsey and Novak. Ramsey notices a metal collar on the victim's neck, which is the killer's way of marking her as his possession. Meanwhile, Stargur watches a woman named Julia at a park, but he gets a headache and takes aspirin. Later, the agents discover that the victim's condition is the same as the others, except for a piece of dog hair found on the body. They find that the hair doesn't contain melanin, making the dog albino. Given that all the victims were bleached after death, Novak concludes that a rare albino dog fits the suspect's preferences. That night, Julia backs her car out of her parking spot when she hears a dog whining. From her side mirror, she spots Valentine behind her car. Thinking that she bumped the dog with her car, Julia checks in on it, allowing Stargirl to grab her. The next day, Novak assigns officers to track down the dog and the truck that matches the tire tracks they found near the bridge. He adds that the suspect made it easy to find the body and the dog hair on it. Hence, Novak believes that the killer wants to be caught. They then receive a report about Julia, so they visit her parents. During this, Ramsey receives a report about a dog breeder who sold an albino puppy three years ago. The buyer drove a truck that matched the marks they found on the bridge, so the agents head to his location. Unaware of the police heading to him, Stargur takes a bath but suddenly suffers a seizure in the tub. With his medicine bottle empty, he struggles towards his kitchen to get more. Soon, a SWAT team breaks into Stargur's house, only to find him unconscious on the floor. As Stargur is sent to a hospital, Ramsey reports that Julia isn't in the house. Instead, they find Stargur's basement where he prepares the bodies. Ramsey also finds the video recording of the previous victim. Meanwhile, Julia finds herself trapped in the glass cell while cameras record her struggle. At the hospital, the doctor diagnoses Stargur with Wellens schizophrenia, which is caused by a virus that remains dormant until triggered by trauma. Only Stargur knows where Julia is, but his mind is already lost for good. So the doctor comes up with an idea. The agents take Stargur into the Campbell Center to get Catherine's team to help. They share how Stargur kept his victims alive for 40 hours, only to drown them afterward. Novak points out on the recording that the water pouring into the cell is automated, so Julia will die tonight if they don't find her. While Miriam prepares Catherine and Stargur, Henry explains to the agents how their neurological connectic transfer system maps the mind and sends it to another person. 
Ramsay notes that they have three stations in the operations room, so Henry recounts that they used to send two psychologists to a patient's mind, but Edward only talked to Catherine, so they only kept her. The procedure then begins and Catherine enters Stargar's mind. She first sees a group baptizing a boy in a lake before finding herself in a tunnel. There, she sees a black dog shaking off red liquid from its fur. She then notices a boy running up a long set of stairs, so she follows him. Catherine finds the boy petting a horse, but he moves away from her. While he hides, Catherine pets the horse and tells the boy about Edward. The younger version of Stargirl looks at the clocks around with fright, then pushes Catherine just before a set of glass descends, slicing the horse into pieces. The young Stargirl then runs away, so Catherine follows him but stops when she finds glass cells with women inside. She notices gears on one of the cells and touches them, triggering a mechanism that opens the cells and moves the victims like puppets. As Catherine walks away, one cell opens and a large woman steps out. The woman grabs Catherine and knocks her down. The woman brings Catherine to a throne room where Stargirl approaches her, pulling velvet fabric attached to his back as he descends. He demands where she came from and Catherine screams, then presses the microchip on her hand to wake herself up. Miriam helps Catherine calm down while Henry shares to Novak that Catherine's journey into Stargirl's mind is becoming dangerous. He explains that if Catherine starts believing that Stargirl's world is real, it could affect her real body. Meanwhile, water starts pouring into Julia's cell but stops after a while. The poor woman cries helplessly and starts praying. Later, Novak approaches Catherine while she's visiting Edward. Novak asks if she thinks she can save him, so Catherine points out that everyone has a part of them that they don't want to show. When she enters a patient's mind, she feels those secrets, but in Stargirl's mind, she felt something she never wanted to. Outside, Catherine confesses that she can't bring herself to understand a criminal's mind. Novak stresses that he doesn't understand it too, that's why he liked his old job as a prosecutor better. Back then, he couldn't convict a man who harmed a little girl, allowing the suspect to kill the victim. This convinced Novak to try to catch the bad guys instead, hoping he could stop them better this way. Catherine recalls that the boy version of Stargirl reached out to her, so maybe he could get him to reveal Julia's location instead. Catherine decides to enter Stargirl's mind again, but suggests having Valentine in the room to appease Stargirl subconsciously and make him more accessible. However, as they're about to start, the power goes out. Once the generators activate, Henry asks Catherine to check the circuit breaker in the room. Dazed, she walks to it but realizes that she's suddenly smaller. Looking back, she sees her body still attached to the device. Suddenly, Catherine finds herself in a glass cage. When she forces the overhead door open, she falls and hangs upside down. She undoes the rope on her leg then falls into a hole where she becomes suspended as if in water. As she descends, Valentine approaches, so she asks him to take her to Stargirl. When she looks behind the dog, she sees the young Stargirl heading inside a house. Catherine follows the boy and finds him hurriedly washing the dishes. To comfort him, Catherine gives the boy the same locket Edward had, telling him to shine a light on the mirror when he needs her. When the boy takes the locket, they accidentally knock over a plate that breaks on the floor. Stargirl quickly hides Catherine in a closet as his father arrives. Through the door, Catherine watches as the man yells at his son for breaking the plate. However, she can't open the door, and when she looks down, she's standing in a basin filled with water and eels. When Catherine looks again, she finds Stargirl's stepmother weakly trying to defend the boy. His father, however, reminds her that she's not his real mother because his mother left them. A flash of light makes Catherine turn around, seeing the closet suddenly empty except for a picture of a room. She then hears Stargirl's father beating his son for playing with dolls. Catherine can't do anything but cry for the boy. The man then picks up an iron and uses it on his son, making him scream in agony. When Catherine looks back at the closet, the inside changes to the room in the picture, where the adult Stargirl removes organs from his victim's body. Cautiously, she approaches him and Stargirl asks why she's there. Catherine tells him that she wants to help him, but Stargirl doesn't believe her, calling her derogatory terms. Catherine comments that it makes him sound like his father. This pisses him off, claiming that his father was nothing. Stargirl recounts that his father held him underwater during his baptism. He had a seizure while under, making him feel like he was drowning while everyone just watched. That evening, his father took him home and beat him, breaking his ribs and jaw. Catherine mournfully says that Stargirl's father was evil, but Stargirl excuses that he was just more powerful than he was. When Catherine insists that he shouldn't have been treated that way, Stargirl thrashes around and stands up. With her thumb over the microchip in her hand, Catherine asks him where Julia is. However, Stargirl steps into the darkness, then appears behind her in a demonic form, throwing Catherine to the floor. Stargirl then crawls over Catherine and places a collar around her neck. 
At the center, Miriam and Henry detect a dangerous spike in Catherine's neural activity, so they try to terminate the connection. Miriam explains that Catherine believes that Stargirl's world is real, but they can't do anything without the risk of worsening her condition. With an idea in mind, Miriam suggests connecting herself to them, but Henry refuses to take the risk. Meanwhile, water pours into Julia's cell again, only to stop suddenly. She starts banging on the cell, begging for help when she notices the pipes on the ceiling. At the center, Novak volunteers to save Catherine, certain that he knows Stargirl's mind enough since he has investigated him for so long. Before they connect him, Miriam reminds Novak to use something personal about Catherine based on the file he read. Hopefully, it'll be enough to snap her back to reality. Once inside Stargirl's mind, Novak wakes up in a field with three women gazing up while their mouths hang open. Suddenly, the women ask him about their son, who's an abomination and was taken by his father. A light shines on Novak's face, and when he turns, he sees himself in a strange room. Behind him, the young Stargirl appears, shining the light from Catherine's locket. The boy runs away as Novak discovers Catherine chained to a bed. Novak approaches Catherine and removes the mask over her face. To his surprise, Catherine seduces him, and while he's distracted, Stargirl places a bag over his head. Novak wakes up chained to a platform while Catherine watches. Stargirl then approaches him and stabs his stomach with a pair of scissors. Stargirl then pulls out his intestine and hangs it over the spikes above the platform. Enraged and in pain, Novak curses at Stargirl, but the man enjoys his screams. Hoping to snap Catherine out of her trance, Novak reminds her about her younger brother who died after being in a coma for six months. Soon, Catherine's blank smile melts away and she quietly approaches Stargirl with a knife. She then stabs Stargirl and the world distorts around them. Novak wakes up with Catherine in a different place. Catherine notices the young Stargirl standing next to an opulent version of the glass cell where a woman dances around. Catherine figures that it represents where Stargirl keeps his victims, so she approaches the boy and asks him where the cell is. Meanwhile, Novak notices engravings on the corners of the cell, resembling something he saw in Stargirl's basement. Coming up with an idea, Novak pulls Catherine away, telling her he knows how to find Julia, so they have to leave now. However, Catherine fights back, still hoping to save the young Stargirl. As Novak continues to drag Catherine away, the boy backs away, and an adult Stargirl descends and takes him. Finally, both Novak and Catherine wake up at the center, just as more water pours into Julia's cell. Hurriedly, Novak calls Cole and tells him to check the machinery that Stargirl used to hoist himself up in the basement. Ramsey checks on Novak, seeing that he's in pain, but Novak just focuses on saving Julia. Soon, Cole sees the logo and identifies the manufacturer as Carver Industrial. Meanwhile, Miriam checks up on Catherine, but Henry announces that Novak is leaving, even though he hasn't been checked yet. Catherine assures Miriam that she's okay, so she urges her to find Novak. However, Novak already gets into a helicopter, ignoring Ramsey's concerns. After Miriam leaves, Catherine locks herself in the operations room, sweeping through notes about Stargirl. Henry tries to stop her, but she locks him out of the room and the machine. Ramsey and Miriam arrive, yet they can't stop Catherine as she reverses the process, bringing Stargirl into her mind. Connecting back to the device, Catherine presents herself as a motherly figure to the young Stargirl. The young Stargirl asks if he can stay with her, but Catherine admits that it doesn't work that way. Disappointed, Stargirl turns into his adult self. He remembers when he found an injured bird, but his father found out about it. To save it from his father's wrath, Stargirl killed the bird instead. Knowing what he's hinting at, Catherine says she can't do the same for him. He then turns back into the boy and says that it no longer matters. Suddenly, Catherine notices bugs crawling around him. The place becomes darker and the demonic Stargirl then climbs out from the pool in front of them. Meanwhile, Novak receives the report from Cole. They track down the original owner of the machine whose property was reclaimed by the state. The state then hired Stargirl to seal the place, allowing him access to all the equipment there. Learning its location, Novak heads to the abandoned property. In Catherine's mind, she confronts the demon Stargirl, using a crossbow to pin him to the ground. She then beats him up and stabs him in the chest. However, he laughs, pointing out that the young version of him suffered the same wound because they're the same. Soon, Novak arrives at the location but doesn't find the cell. Suddenly, a pipe from a machine opens. Noticing this, Novak follows the machine's pipes, leading him to an underground hatch. Finally, Novak finds Julia's cell, seeing her breathing through the pipe she broke. He shoots the glass and breaks it with a pipe, saving the terrified Julia. At the same time, Catherine reverts to her motherly form and cradles the young Stargirl, who asks her to save him, like how he saved the bird. Mournfully, Catherine carries the boy into the pool and waits until the boy limps and the real Stargirl passes away. 
Days later, Novak meets Catherine outside Starger's house and brings up how she plans to let Edward enter her mind. He asks if she's sure about that, so Catherine assures him that she won't hurt Edward. However, Novak clarifies that he wasn't worried about the boy. Catherine then checks on him and Novak admits that his mind is still scattered. He adds that in the report, they claim that he was under the influence when his memory was triggered, which allowed him to find Julia. The center's experiment is never recorded in the report. Soon, Catherine gains approval to allow Edward in her mind. She adds trees to his mind's desert and the two walk to each other with new hope. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.